Okay, let's start in the kitchen with food. Now our food has become very toxic due to modern agricultural practices. And whether that is soil depletion or that is the traditional farming practices of using glyphosate and others or genetically modifying our food, so making food bigger than what it really should be, or feeding our cows things that uh, they're not used to eating. Um, now you combine that with salmon and fish and raising them in a controlled environment. We have a very toxic situation with our food. So let me help you navigate this when it comes to grocery store shopping, what to keep into and in your house and, uh, and ultimately what you keep in stock. So the EWG puts out a list of the clean 15 and dirty dozen every year. And these are the most heavily sprayed crops, those that have been genetically modified. And they do testing on these different fruits and vegetables on what you have to buy organic versus what you can get away with buying conventional. And I'm going to show you this list here in a second, but I want to help you navigate this so you don't constantly have to be thinking about 12, 15, and keep track of all those that are on separate lists. So the main thing that you want to look at when you're looking at clean 15 versus dirty dozen is really the outer covering. So this here is examples of all that is on the dirty dozen list. Not, it's not all inclusive. There's many others that are on this, but the general theme of this is that there's a thin outer skin on the outside. Even the apple, if you really look at the apple, there's just a thin outer coating. And so for a pesticide to get into this apple and get into it and then get into you when you eat it, it's very easy. Uh, same thing with spinach and the same thing with, with kale and as you'll see with, uh, with celery. So the dirty dozen, think of that which is more permeable, which is more easy to get into the actual fruit or the vegetable itself. Even an onion, even an onion, even though I can peel this back a little bit, but it's very thin, thin layer as opposed to what would be on the clean 15, that which you can get away with buying conventional is think of an avocado, this big outer shell, thick outer shell that's more protective of that that's on the inside. The toxins will always be in the outer shell and whether that is eggs or whether that is the skin of fish or whether that is you know, in a lemon rind. So when you're out at a restaurant as an example and you might want lemon in your water, uh, I would encourage you, if you don't know that it's organic, don't have them put the full lemon in the water because you just don't know if it's conventional or not. And again, the, the outer part is where the toxins live. Uh, consider also the same principles with lemon and oranges and even uh, you know, a mango having a, a more thick outer layer to it. A mango has been found to have more pesticides within them. In fact, citrus in general, when you're thinking about citrus products, you know, the EWG found 90% of citrus products are contaminated with, with pesticides. And so even though something's on the you know, clean 15 list, doesn't necessarily make it free of pesticides. In fact, even organic strawberries were found to have some level of pesticides within them. And that's because of cross-contamination and pesticide blowing from one farm to a, another farm. But it was at a lower level than what you would find conventionally by far. So fruits and vegetables, when considering fruits and vegetables, consider the dirty dozen or clean 15. In our household, we just buy everything organic, but if you're on a very restricted budget and you've got to make that decision, consider the clean 15 or the dirty dozen. Next, let's talk about proteins and fats. In this conversation of proteins and fats, we have to talk about beef. So grass-fed, versus grain-fed versus 100% grass-fed, grass-finished. And so already you can see that there's more to the story than just grass-fed. Our cows are meant to feed, uh, feed on grass. They do not feed on grain, they don't feed on corn, and they certainly don't feed on candy. You know, one of the, one of the uh, recent stories that you might have seen in the news is that farmers feeding cows Skittles is because it was actually cheaper than feeding them grass is a very controlled environment. So when you are looking at beef, you want to look at what is the cow designed to eat? The cow is designed to eat grass. And not only is it designed to eat grass, when you feed it grain, it actually fattens it up faster 
and ultimately it causes a ratio of bad fats to good fats that is way out of balance. It'll cause inflammation in that cow. And you might have heard, you are what you eat. Well, you aren't just what you eat, you are what you eat ate. So if your cow is eating grains, well, they're becoming inflamed. In fact, the ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s, omega-6s being more the pro-inflammatory uh, omegas versus omega-3s, which is our anti-inflammatory, the ratio is supposed to be close to one to one, but in grain-fed beef, it's closer to 20 to one. So that ratio of bad fats to good fats is way out of balance. It's causing conjugated linoleic acids to be way underbalanced. And so those are the good, healthy fats that you really want. And then what happens when we eat this, that's what contributes to inflammation and contributes to heart disease and contributes to high cholesterol and ultimately clotting certain arteries within your body. Grass-fed beef is actually opposite of that. When you eat grass-fed beef, it's gonna actually be pro positive inflammation, but then negate negative, inf negative inflammation. And so you want your beef to be 100% grass fed and also grass finished. So it's important to ask the butcher or ask that person at the farm if it's been grass finished, not just grass fed. Farmers oftentimes finish it with grain at the very end. And you want to know that if that's the case. Lastly, let's talk about fish. So fish is great, great in omega-3s, great for your body. It's actually helping with inflammation and ultimately your body is made up of fat. So you need good, healthy fats. The problem with fish is toxicity now. And unfortunately, our water systems have become very toxic with the introduction of mercury and heavy metals. Uh, our fish, this gets absorbed within our fish, which when we eat our fish, it gets absorbed within us. And so there's a couple things that you want to take note of when choosing fish. One of the things that you want to take note of is where it's caught. So ideally you want uh, Pacific, you want wild caught. The colder the water, the better, and the smaller the fish, the better. When we have larger fish, the more bioaccumulation occurs, which means that the accumulation over time occurs. And ultimately our bodies also have this effect of bioaccumulation. So we pass down from generation to generation toxins. So toxins are very sticky and they're fat soluble. And that's why we're spending just a little bit more time on fish because the impact of the toxins on fish is, is huge. You've heard of mercury within tuna, but it's not just mercury. So when choosing a fish, the smaller, the better, you want Pacific, ideally cold water fish, and ultimately you want it to be wild caught. Now, Wild caught salmon, this is a sockeye salmon. It's, uh, it's wild caught. We get this one from the Wild Alaskan Company. And the reason why we don't do farmed fish is because of two reasons. One is because the fish is designed to be out in the open, swimming upstream, developing the muscle mass, also being exposed to spring water, spring fed waters that are uh, rich in minerals and rich in life. You don't get that with farm raised fish. Secondarily, when you farm raise fish, in order to get it to be the salmon color, you have to inject it with food dye. And so you'll see on farm raised fish, oftentimes there's been color added, which if, uh, if, if you weren't going to buy that before, just looking at it and adding color might be the difference maker for you. So in order to uh, really select good options when it comes to fish, you want it to be wild caught and you also want it to be a smaller fish that is from a cold water source. So this is all easy to control when it's in your own household, but when you exit your household and you're eating out, it's a lot harder to control what the food has been cooked in, so the oils that have been used. It's also really difficult to know if they're using organic fruits and vegetables. It's very difficult to know what the preparation was. If the cow was grass fed and grass finished on the menus, a lot of times it just says grass fed, not 100% grass fed. So it's much more difficult to control any of this when you're eating out. So some of the common questions to ask when you are eating out is what's the source of beef? When they tell you that it is Angus beef or it's from a specific farm, if they aren't specific with saying it's 100% grass fed, it's likely that it's not. You can ask more questions, but if they don't volunteer that information, in my experience at least, 
It's not chef driven and it's certainly not going to be 100% grass fed. Uh, asking sources of fish, even learning where, which fish comes from where and, uh, and learning this at, even at your table, you can just open your phone and find out what fish looks like and how big that fish is. There's been several times where I've had an educational experience on uh, certain fish. And so asking where it is from and asking how it was prepared, which oils are uh, included or used in the preparation process. And just realize that the more often that you are eating out, the less controlled the product is gonna be. And so it's very likely that um, it is going to be rancid oils. It's very likely that it's not going to be as good as it would be in your own household. So the idea is to prepare, to plan, and then execute. So you, you plan ahead of time, you prepare your food ahead of time, have food that lasts multiple meals, like soups, like chilies, and things like that, um, like uh, homemade lasagnas that it's, it can actually be uh, saved and utilized the next day. This is a good way of doing it at home and, and really just keeping everything very simple.